We had some trees fall down on the farm, four or five oak trees during a storm two and a half years ago. My wife had the idea of having some furniture made out of our trees. I didn't have a clue. So through the Department of Forestry, I got a list of names of people that had a meal in a kiln, and I went to one of them in the next county up, and, and when I saw him cut my lumber up, I thought it was the neatest thing I'd ever seen, and 30 days later, I owned one. My name's Gary McInturf, Lawrenceburg, Kentucky, McInturf Sawmill and Kiln, LLC. Originally, I purchased the mill. This was going to be a, a part-time slash hobby uh, venture, and, uh, and I was really enjoying it, so I said, well, let's put a kiln in, so we did that. And then we have the mill and we have the kiln, so I started selling uh, uh, dried lumber, and, and that's where my money making, most money making comes from. And uh, we've added in the, the mulch this year, it's new for us mulching uh, the cedar slabs, and uh, hopefully that'll take off pretty soon. I have a Woodmiser LT40 hydraulic sawmill, I have a Woodmiser kiln, uh, DH4000 model. I, um, I also have an edger, which I just recently picked up. It has really improved my uh, quality. I, a lot of times, uh, uh, logs that, uh, I mean lumber that wouldn't have normally needed to be edged, I'll run through the edger just to make it a better quality piece. I, uh, I also resharpen my own blades. I wanted the control over to sharpen at my convenience, and I think I'm working with about 75 blades right now, so I'll take a rainy day or a snowy day and turn the radio up and have the stove going out there and just sharpen blades all day. And that way I can keep myself in the fresh supply, which as you can see, I'm depleted right now, so I need to sharpen soon. So. Well, of course, when I, when I need logs of whatever species, I'll call up the logger I work with, and he'll roll in, and we'll unload him, and the first thing I'm gonna do is encoat the logs with anchor seal, and that will help prevent checking on the ends. And I do use a uh, color coding system in some cases to help me uh, differentiate the species, if they're customer logs or my logs or whatever. And then hopefully I'll get right on those logs within the next uh, uh, week or two and get on them and cut them up. Put them out in the air drying building where they can air dry. And uh, the, the more they air dry, the uh, less time they'll spend in the kiln eventually, which saves me money on electricity. And then uh, as the kiln load winds down, I'll pick up and call the customers that tend to take the larger quantities of whatever's in the kiln and, and try to time it so they can come and pick up right out of the kiln and I'll give them a 10% discount because I don't have to handle it again. And then whatever doesn't sell out of the kiln will be stacked over in the, uh, the building that uh, have the, the lumber standing vertically where uh, people can come and pick out as they wish. So I'm not so much into the uh, quantity as I am the quality of the lumber and that's my little niche. I prefer to be known for the quality guy rather than the guy that can put out a whole lot. Originally, my customers were limited to the home workshop guy, the hobbyist, and, and then once I started making the cold sales calls to small uh, uh, cabinet shops, then that really took off. Well, I try to keep a good relationship with my customers. I want to be known as going above and beyond. Usually, if someone comes in and asks for a 100-board foot, we'll measure up a 100-board foot, and at the end, I'll throw an extra board or two on. You know, that just gives them a little something extra. I can promise you that Lowe's has never done that for their customers, thrown an extra two before in. So I try to do that. Maintains a good relationship with the customer as well as, as get, gets the goodwill out there, gets your, get people knowing that you're gonna go a little bit above and beyond. We had a tornado coming through uh, about three weeks ago and I called one of my customers that I knew lived in the path of it, made sure he was in the basement and he was. But I said, who else would do that for you? <laughs> Uh, during the recession, I feel that my business has actually benefited because, in my opinion, the guy that would have gone to Lowe's to buy the, the stuff he needed for his deck at a higher price for treated lumber is now sweating a little bit and bringing me a log or buying lumber for me at a lower price to do his project with. So I think I've actually benefited during the recession. I think my business is growing uh, from word of mouth and I've done some aggressive advertising. I've made a ton of, of cold sales calls, which I'm not really fond of doing, but they've really paid off and paid big dividends with the cold sales calls. And the target uh, people I've called have been small cabinet shops, people of that nature that they buy from one to thousand board feet at a time, and, and that's where my bread and butter. Uh, I've expanded fairly, fairly rapidly, but I did do my research before each, each expansion and each new purchase, and, and it, they've all been justified. So uh, I, I approached it cautiously, but it, everything was well thought out before I made an additional purchase or expansion. I'm glad I bought a wood miser first because if I hadn't have bought one then, I would have bought one by now anyway. Oh, absolutely, absolutely satisfied, and, and maybe in the future the uh, 40 will read 70.